proclaim his greatness. Tell the nations what he has done. Be glad that we belong to him. Let all who worship him rejoice. Go to the Lord for help and worship him constantly. We sing our first hymn together, hymn number six. Father, we love you, we worship and adore you. today comprise a video with lyrics. It's a lovely version of Bernadette Farrell's wonderful worship song and it really does say it all for our opening prayers. You may want to sing and join in at home or just watch and listen but together let's praise God with this video with lyrics, Earth's Creator.
And so let's just close our opening prayers of adoration with the Lord's Prayer. Should we say together the words of the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you very much for that, Sue. That was lovely. We have got some redirected mail. It is from, uh, well, actually the postmark is AD 57. And it was originally written by someone called Paul to the church in Rome. And it is this morning, as we just had it, redirected to the gathered Zoom church here, where we are right now. Now, Paul writes to explain clearly his understanding of the Christian faith and the practical implications of living out that Christian faith. Commentators agree that the letter to the Romans is the most complete statement of his message. Now, some of the contents of this, of this letter, which we have just received, which has been in the post, as we can see, for a considerable long time, are some of the, some of the statements in, the, in there are written for the time and the culture for when they were written. But what is important for us to understand is how much Paul says in all his letters, not just Romans, that he's right up to date and that he's right as relevant for us today in the situations that we are in right now. Trying to live out our Christian faith in the best way we can. And so from Paul's letter to the Romans, I have chosen just four timeless truths for us to share this morning. And the first of these is from chapter one, reading from verses 16 and 17. And Paul writes, I have complete confidence in the gospel. It is God's power to save all who believe, first the Jews and also the Gentiles. For the gospel reveals how God puts people right with himself. It is through faith from beginning to end. As the scripture says, the person who is put right with God through faith shall live. These two verses state the theme of the entire letter. God puts people right with himself through faith. And the terms righteousness and justified describe what happens when someone believes in Christ as their saviour. They are put right with God. We are put right with God. Not one of us lives a perfectly good, holy and righteous life. And as Paul writes, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For Christ died to pay the penalty for our sin and faith in Jesus puts us into a right relationship with God, our Heavenly Father. And that is what Paul told the church in Rome all those years ago. And that is what Paul is telling us today, exactly the same. This is a timeless truth that God puts you, God puts me right with himself through faith. We put our trust and faith in God through the saving grace of his son, our saviour, Jesus Christ. And now for our second reading. Romans chapter 1, verses 10 to 25. Ever since God created the world, his invisible qualities, both his eternal power and his divine nature, have been clearly seen. They are perceived in the things that God has made. So those people have no excuse at all. They know God 
but they do not give him the honour that belongs to him, nor do they thank him. Instead, their thoughts have become complete nonsense, and their empty minds are filled with darkness. They say they are wise, but they are fools. Instead of worshipping the immortal God, they worship images made to look like mortals, or birds, or animals, or reptiles. And so God has given those people over to do the filthy things their hearts desire, and they do shameful things with each other. They exchange the truth about God for a lie. They worship and serve what God has created, instead of the Creator himself, who is to be praised forever. Amen. They exchange the truth about God for a lie. They worship and serve what God has created instead of the creator himself, who is to be praised forever. There is a timeless quality to that statement. And it's probably even more true today than it was when it was first written. Paul was referring to, of course, the worship of statues and images. But just think for a moment of how many things we have in our modern day society that can trap us into a state of worship. Paul writes, ever since God created the world, his invisible qualities, both his eternal power and his divine nature have been clearly seen. They are perceived in the things that God has made. And that surely is another timeless truth, that our creator God is worthy of our devotion. And we stand in awesome wonder when we consider all the wonders of creation. I feel a song coming on. Number 82. O oh Lord my God when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hand hath made.
And our third reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, how God puts us right with him, verses 22 to 26 from chapter 3. God puts people right through their faith in Jesus Christ. God does this to all who believe in Christ because there is no difference at all. Everyone has sinned and is far away from God's saving presence. But by the free gift of God's grace, all are put right with him through Christ Jesus, who sets them free. God offered him so that by his blood, he should become the means by which people's sins are forgiven through their faith in him. God did this in order to demonstrate that he is righteous. In the past, he was patient and overlooked people's sins, but in the present time, he deals with their sins in order to demonstrate his righteousness. In this way, God shows that he himself is righteous and that he puts right everyone who believes in Jesus. By the free gift of God's grace, we are put right with him through Christ Jesus, who sets us free. Paul writing to the church in Rome all that long time ago, and is just as true for us today. Another example of a timeless truth. Let's sing now. Hymn number 424, God forgave my sin, in Jesus' name, freely, freely you have received, freely, freely give. God forgave my sin, in Jesus' I'll be born again in Jesus' name, and in Jesus' name I come to you to share his love as he told me to. He said, freely, freely you have received, freely. Because you believe, others will know that I live. All power is given in Jesus' name, in earth and heaven, in Jesus' name, and in Jesus' name I come to you to share.
And now our fourth reading, taken from Romans chapter 12, verse 1, and verses 9 to 18. Life in God's service. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true spiritual act of worship. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honour one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Thanks be to God for his holy word. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jackie, and thank you, Graham, also for those readings. That is our, um, our four readings from Paul, and may God bless to each one of us these readings from his word. The last reading, which incidentally leads up to the, the lecture reading for today, Paul writes in a clear way on how we should respond to God's grace. We should respond with a willing heart to do the work of the kingdom in the places where we are. Why? Paul writes, so then my brothers and sisters, because of God's great mercy, I appeal to you, offer yourselves as a living sacrifice to God, dedicated to his service and pleasing to him. But if we don't understand what God's great mercy to us means, both collectively and individually, then Paul's appeal to service falls on deaf ears and the appeal is lost. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty of sin is the only honest answer that each of us can give to that question on our own, in our human condition left to our own devices. We are guilty, guilty of sin, and as far away from the awesome presence of God as it's possible to be. But the good news is that by the freely offered gift of God's grace, which we do not deserve, we can be put right with God through faith in his Son, Jesus Christ. We are forgiven. We are lifted up. Do you remember the verses in that old hymn, In Loving Kindness, Jesus Came? He called me long before I heard, before my sinful heart was stirred. But when I took him at his word, forgiven, he lifted me. God's great mercy, then, is to re reconcile us to himself through his son, Jesus Christ, because of the sacrifice that Jesus made on that cross for each one of us. And it is when we recognize our sin and unworthiness and truly repent and turn to God in sorrow for that sin that we receive salvation through faith in his son, Jesus Christ. But you don't need me to tell you that this work of God is not a once and for all act in our lives for we are so inconsistent and often fall away from him and need to recommit ourselves and rededicate ourselves time and time again to his service we depend on god's constant great mercy to us his continuing love for us as we dare to call him father 
And it is when we are truly aware of the love of God that we can be stirred by the working of his spirit to respond to that love. Work hard and do not be lazy. Serve the Lord with a heart full of devotion, writes Paul. Any organization or in industry or commerce or any serve in the community would surely require of its workforce a commitment to hard work and devotion to duty. Financial incentives might be used to achieve that desired result. But the Christian church, our church on the other hand, is like no other organization for the prime motivation of the church is love. And the church is like no other organization in respect of the opportunities for service that is offered. In response to God's love for us, can anything less than the best we offer be good enough for his service? Second rate, part time, make do, patch and mend. Those are the words are surely out of the question. Perhaps that seems a tall order. I know that I don't match up to that challenge all of the time. Perhaps sometimes our service is rather half-hearted. Hang on, you might say, I've got troubles and worries of my own which crowd in and tend to overwhelm us. Perhaps we need to heed the words of verse 12 in chapter 12. Let your hope keep you joyful, be patient in your troubles and pray at all times. Our striving is in vain if the service we undertake is under our own steam. Our service in the name of Jesus grows out of our faith and our faith grows through the power of his Holy Spirit working in our lives and is nurtured through prayer and worship. Sometimes perhaps we are so involved in what we are doing that we forget why we are doing it and from whom we can draw our strength. I can remember some time ago now in those good old days when we used to go around house to house collections. I think it was, I think it was Christian Aid and I was collecting and it was a hot day and I was doing the Ridgeway but I wasn't doing the, the nice side, I shouldn't say nice side, I wasn't doing the side with uh, the, the nice short drives, which is um, Terry's and Pete's side. I was doing the other side of the Ridgeway, which has got the long drives. And on a long road with steep long drives, I had a couple of houses that just gave me back empty envelopes. And I felt rather discouraged and rather tired as I climbed yet another steep drive. I rang the doorbell and a man came to the door and your heart sings because you just know don't you that the men don't know where they put the envelopes and it's always the ladies who can give the answer straight away but anyway this guy knew where his envelope was and he gave me the donation and it was not an empty envelope and as he was closing the door he said thanks very much god bless you and as i went down the drive i realized what he had said and that was what I needed to get the spring back into my step. I didn't have to do it in my own strength alone, but in the strength of the one in whose name I was serving. And I had been so rushed that I had forgotten. We all need, don't we, that constant renewal of the power of the Spirit in our lives. Perhaps sometimes we need to pause and to pray, to wait and to worship. And surely we can in these strange times that we are going through, we can think in a positive way how we can nurture our faith and grow in understanding of what it means to each one of us to be called a Christian. Finally, some words that I found, and I'm afraid I've lost the, the source. To encounter the living Lord Jesus, that is, 
to be converted and believe is to know oneself called to some service within the gospel mission. Paul and Peter were to be outstanding as itinerant missionary apostles. Most of us will be asked to serve in less prominent ways. Nevertheless, the new life that Christ shares with his people is not only joy and victory, though joy and victory it certainly is, but also obedience and service. If you are risen with Christ, you do not simply sit back and enjoy it. You do the work that he gives you to do. Amen. Now, as our prayer of intercession this morning, we're going to use the words from hymn number 664. Hymn number 664 are the words of which will come up onto the screen. And I invite you to join with me as we say the words of this hymn, Lord, you call us to your service. Lord, you call us to your service, each in our own way. Some to caring, loving, healing, some to preach or pray, some to work with quiet learning, truth discerning day by day. Life for us is always changing in the work we do. Christian love adds new dimensions to the way we care. For we know that you could lead us as you need us anywhere. Seeing life from your perspective makes your challenge plain as your heart is grieving over those who live in pain. Teach us how, by our compassion, you may fashion hope again. Lord, we set our human limits on the work we do. Send us your directing spirit, pour your power through, that we may be free in living and in giving all for you. Amen. And our final hymn together this morning is hymn number 663. So if you were using the hymn book, you've only got to turn to the left hand side. I, the Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry. And the response, of course, here I am, Lord. I will go, Lord, if you lead me. I will hold your people in my heart.
And so at the end of our worship this morning, we take our worship with us into the days of the week ahead. And we do that in the power of his spirit. And in the power of his spirit now, let us bless each other as we say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen.